Are you telling me Google doesn't know how to do things correctly? Uh, I would never suggest such a thing to our Google overlords. We are going to uh, do a little bit of a eulogy today. We, we gotta oh, do- Oh, great. Let me just dust off my funeral clothing. You're gonna dust, the, dust off the funeral clothing, uh, press F to pay respects, because um, Google Stadia is, uh, is, is gone. It's officially dead. It's officially dead. Uh, Stadia released a statement to say that at the end of the day, uh, Pacific Standard Time, uh, they were going to be signing off from the cloud. Uh, and y'all be good to each other and stay safe out there, which means that the cloud servers are, are, are down finally for, for Google Stadia. Now, the thing about it is, is that we kind of knew that this was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is just the, the official cloud servers are off and it's a cloud gaming platform. So do you have any interest in actually utilizing? Uh, no. Okay. No. Why, why would I even bother asking? Right. <laughs> I did. I have, I, I have a computer that can run games. Why would I need cloud gaming platforms? That's true. Uh, originally it would have been project Yeti. Um, reports are that they might've been working on this as early as 2016 and then Project Stream was uh, announced in, in 2018, just to kind of give people some, some idea. Uh, Google Stadia uh, didn't come into, like, I don't think, till 2019 or 2020. They actually released the platform. The idea, for people who are not aware, is that Stadia was going to basically be a, like a console console of sorts where you would be able to run all of your games directly over cloud gaming. You wouldn't really need hardware in your hands or in your home. You would have your Stadia account and you'd run them all from centralized servers. So if you, for Does, instance, yes. Doesn't GeForce have the GeForce experience where you can do the same kind of thing running on their servers? Not only that, not only that, but now if you have like Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass, they are experimenting with cloud gaming options as well. So you can actually run a lot of those games without downloading them and run them over cloud uh, directly. So if you, for instance, saw one of the day one releases on the platform and you were like, I don't want to want to download it. Most of those actually have the cloud gaming option so that you can play them right over the internet. For people who are, are still a little lost, think of it this way. You can either have the data on your console, on your computer, in your home, or the data can be on a centralized server somewhere else and you play the game from the actual internet line, from your ethernet. Yeah. Uh, so it's akin to playing like an online game like World of Warcraft where you rely on the servers except none of the yeah, software is on your computer. You just play it through the account. Right. Now, theoretically, there are some big benefits to this. Um, one of the big benefits, of course, is that you don't need to have a really powerful gaming rig or anything like that or even a console to say that you can actually play these games. And technically, if you're playing them with enough bandwidth, you could play a lot of really top-end games uh, with like full 4K graphic settings and all the like. There are a couple little stumbling blocks that they were coming along with initially. One is that you need to have a pretty good internet connection that's going right. to produce pretty high speeds consistently. And then you have the other problem of lag. Yeah. Lag was a big one when it first released, and it's not even so much that it was just the lag of, oh, I have to wait, like, a second or two between pushing a button input and getting a reaction. Because, again, now your game is being run off of a server somewhere else, so there's going to be a little bit of lag. But the problem that Stadia had originally, and they did tests on this, is that the lag was inconsistent. Sometimes right. it would be a second, sometimes it would be three seconds, and you didn't know. So uh, playing any kind of shooter was going to be nearly impossible because yeah. you'd need to have, like, split-second timing on anything like that. We've got 60 FPS with a three-second lag. I am going to get absolutely owned if I try to do an online shooter. Just try to, just, just imagine trying to play Call of Duty and getting... Yeah. Or, or, I mean, 
one, I'd have to play Call of Duty, but... They suffered from a few other problems, they didn't really have much for exclusives, a lot of third-party content was having trouble getting over onto the system as well. They didn't have, like, a rich gaming library like, like, a Game Pass. Like, they were so far away from that. <laughs> I, I can't imagine when they were going to actually get, get a platform like that. Google reportedly also didn't make it particularly easy for the developers to port games that were already existing over. Are you telling me Google doesn't know how to do things correctly? I would never suggest such a thing to our Google overlords. Um, I, a lot of the large tech industries have a tendency to uh, like start a lot of ideas, mm -hmm. but not really be able to follow through on all of them. Uh, like once, Amazon Games. Uh, How's New World doing these days? Yeah, exactly. What it essentially then happens is that if there are any kind of stumbling blocks or it's not going the way that they want, they don't uh, you know, support it for long term. I think back on the video game companies like the console wars that we've had over the course of time, and one of the reasons why they stuck around is because they seem to understand that it wasn't going to be easy starting up. Like, the original Xbox was, like, they seem to understand we're coming into a space that's already dominated by a couple well-known brands, and we're gonna have to stick it out and work on it. And then they mm -hmm. did, and Microsoft has definitely won out in that respect but yeah didn't weren't xboxes originally like a net loss for microsoft i i believe they were i believe they were and they kind of knew that going but in they didn't care they're like you know we've got the capital that we can put the money into this it can be a loss and we can still you know sell these yeah, for Microsoft, they realized that it was worthwhile enough to be an industry leader in the gaming market that they were willing to take losses on it to begin with. Right. I think one of the problems is that Google uh, sees, like, a stumbling block like that and kind of goes, oh, this isn't working the way we wanted to, and then they'll just walk away from it entirely. They so. do that with a lot of their products. They, they have. They have. Um, Google Glass. Google Google. Google, uh, everything. Yeah, a lot of their projects just Google, just, you know, Google Glass. They end up using the stuff they learn from it on other places, typically. But yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a learning experience. Chances are, and this is probably the takeaway we should use from Stadia is that it's not that the idea of cloud gaming is a bad one, but I don't think the market was there yet, uh, and I think that it, it in the future. Uh, it probably will be. Stadia was one of the first steps in trying to make that happen. Uh, but I, I just feel like it was probably a little too early and in conceptual stages at that time. Um, probably. Yeah. Now, the, the problem, too, and I, I don't know if this is my existential issue, is that I don't really know if I like the idea of moving completely to cloud gaming. Because what happens when they say, well, here's a game that just doesn't sell very well and we're just not going to have it available. There's no physical copies that people own of the game. Well, that doesn't bother me too much at all these days because like most computers that you get built or like for gaming rigs aren't really equipped with optical drives anymore. That's true. That's true. But... So like, ask me the last time I bought a physical game. Okay, when no was idea. the last... Why'd you, a... Why'd you tell me to ask you the question then? It's been years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it... I think the, la too. the last time I bought a physical game was probably for the 3DS, and it was after the game had already been, like, out for a while. Okay. And um... it's a game, like, a game I can no longer buy a digital copy of. Oh, okay. No, I understand that. I think the last physical copy that I built was, uh, that I bought was uh, Borderlands 3, so that was 2019. But the thing about it is that I do still have a bunch of discs for my Xbox One that sure, will- I have a lot of discs for my PS2 as well. Yeah. The thing about it is though, is that those discs that I have for my Xbox One are still playable on the Series X. So I always have that media and I can utilize it on the, the systems themselves. Uh, I think the problem is that it, if we ever move to a, a point where everyone's just doing like the subscription style cloud gaming portion and there are games that just aren't doing very well and don't serve the company to utilize, 
I don't know if those games just kind of get lost to the ether. Maybe that's me and my game preservation part where I think it's important to keep this stuff around or, or archived for the future. Yeah. But. Well, that's what emulators are for at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, as long as you can get your hands on that, I suppose. This has been uh, Rest in Pieces. Rest in Pieces, Google Stadia. Rest, rest in Product Hell. R- rest in Processing, <laughs> Google Stadia. An interesting idea that just wasn't really made for an oh, audience. O- o- on a side <laughs> note, though, I do believe that during the last days, they were like, Okay, yeah, so we're going to be shutting this down, but you guys have already bought your games, so we're going to try to hook you up with getting these games through other services without extra cost for you. So at least they did that. At least they did that, yeah. Because it is that is one of those things for the consumer aspect I was also a little concerned with, that if your games are completely um, reliant on a server that somebody else has, that you might not be able to access the games that you bought. So I'm certainly hoping that they're doing what they can for the people that did invest into Stadia. It's sort of like uh, Elite Dangerous when they stopped their console development. They went, hey, we're going to cease console development and just focus on the PC development because it's, the process between getting it from like computer is a lot easier than getting it out on consoles and then going through their update process and everything. And to keep everything in line, it's kind of a real hassle. Oh, yeah. Um, so they just have been, hey, we're going to cease console and focus on this. You can still play it on console. It's just not going to have any more updates. And all the players on console are like up in arms. And they're like, hey, what we'll do is anyone on console who wants and has it will give you a free copy of this on either Epic or Steam or whatever your online preference is on the PC. Sure. We'll give you a free copy and we'll transfer over your accounts. Do they have to? No. Is it good faith they did? Okay. Absolutely. If you are somebody who actually did play with Stadia and have thoughts on it, i kind of like to know what the experience was like, and if you feel like Google actually serviced you at the end of its lifespan uh, so that you were able to still keep your stuff. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below so we can continue that conversation.